Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Let's Heal Live. We're so glad you're here with us today. My name is Monica, and I have my friend Kate and a new friend again, Linda, <laughs> sending in for Fred. Y'all say hello. hello. Good, morning, Good morning, everybody. Fred's not with us today because he's with AJ, his grandson, and we're praying for you, Fred, and for AJ. They're at the doctor, and um, it's so hard to know what's going on with poor AJ, and Fred is so good to him and knows something's not right, and he will not rest until they find out what's not right and fix it for him. So we just, um, we'll begin in prayer, and we'll start with prayer for Fred. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, we bless you, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time set aside to pray. We thank you for holding us all in your loving care, looking out for each one of us, guiding us, leading us, and bringing us to the healing that we will one day understand is only possible through you. We um, lay at your feet, Fred and AJ and all the doctors, and we just pray that the tests are clear and give some good results so that they can find relief and comfort for sweet AJ. Continue to bless them, give Fred good health as he's such a wonderful caregiver and such a good example to all of us on how to love unconditionally. May we all learn to do that just a little better. I'm thankful that Kate and Linda are here today and we just ask you, Lord, to take everything that's in our hearts and all the hearts of the people who are watching. You know what's there. You know what's what we're wrestling with. You know what needs to come to the surface so that we feel your joy and love today. Let that be during this time. And what, ladies, would you like to pray for? I'd like to say thank you for your birthday on Sunday. Happy birthday <laughs> to Monica. Thank Happy you. Birthday. It was a wonderful, wonderful birthday. Yes. And um, just pray for peace among so many people, especially for, the, as Linda said, the people in India. Peace for everybody and um, that, that's suffering right now, especially. I won't name names, but a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Linda? I would like to pray for all the people in our own community as well as all the people that are suffering in India, that our hearts and our our minds and our prayers go out to them. They need this more than anything right now. We know because we've been through it with our own people in our own areas, but we like to thank God for getting us through this as he has, for teaching us how to love one another as we should and show kindness every day because without it, we're never gonna make it. We need him and we need kindness and love in our lives. Amen. Perfect. That's beautiful. That's kind of what my story is about, too. <laughs> so I'm closest to the microphone, and I'm concerned that people maybe can't hear y'all as well. So I have a loud mouth, so just make sure you speak a little louder so everybody can hear you because you got beautiful things to say. Um, so we will begin. We are uh, going to be praying over the gospel from Ascension Sunday, and Kate will read that um, gospel in whole right now. Okay. This is from Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. Amen. Amen. So it's a very short gospel and so therefore you one would think I have a very short story to go with it but one would be incorrect if they thought that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so bear with me it's a little bit long but um, I love the way it unfolded so I hope that it's a some way blesses you. The title is Alive and Well. 
Class was dismissed with this assignment. Go into the whole community and document everyone you encounter who is proclaiming the gospel. Listen for a good approach to proclaiming the good news in such a way that others come to believe and want to be saved through baptism. Whoever brings in a believable story will be rewarded. Whoever shares a story we don't believe will not receive a passing grade. The students set out looking for signs. Emery headed straight to the church. Surely that is the place she will most likely see the Holy Spirit at work, bringing souls to the Lord. Emery arrived about 30 minutes before Mass would begin. She ascended the steps and opened the tall, sturdy wooden doors that keep the beautiful house of the Lord a safe and sacred space. Before her eyes could adjust from the sunlight to the interior light, her nose took in the familiar scent of incense and candles. Yes, this is where people come to believe. Emery dipped her hand into the cool, clear holy water and blessed herself, recalling her own baptism. She stepped across the marble floor and heard the angelic voices of the choir warming up for the service. A young lady was escorting her aging grandmother up the center aisle. She overheard an, the elderly woman thank her granddaughter for driving her and coming early so that she could pray the rosary. I just love hearing the beautiful music while I pray, she said. The young lady rolled her eyes and said, I wish they would play new songs. Those are as old as you, Granny. We need something fresh. The two slowly made their way to Granny's favorite pew. Second from the front, on the right, they knelt to pray. Emery genuflected, then began walking the perimeter to meditate on the stations of the cross. As she prayed before the tenth station, a sacristan zoomed in, zoomed by in a flurry of hurry because the Eucharistic ministers were late. A visitor stopped him, asking if they could get information on joining the church and enrolling in RCIA. I'm sorry, he blurted out. I just don't have time right now. And just like that, he was off again. The poor person felt totally dismissed and defeated, so they just turned around and walked out the door. Emery was stunned. She started observing the people who had assembled for Mass. One teenager was scrolling through messages and pictures on their phone. A young mother was fussing at her squirmy child, and a man in a suit huffed out of his seat after a guy covered in tattoos sat next to him. A young couple sat huddled in the back corner, giggling and taking selfies, seemingly unaware they were even in church. Emery realized this was not the best place for her extra credit assignment after all. Later that afternoon, she decided to visit the local soup kitchen and volunteer for the afternoon shift. She parked in the downtown parking garage and quickly descended the three flights of stairs. She took a shortcut through City Park and noticed a crowd gathering by the big yellow bench in the center of the park. Perched on the bench was a young man in suit and tie, waving a black Bible in the air. In the name of Jesus, I command Satan to leave this city. Hate has taken hold of our hearts. We must speak a new language of love to each other. Pray with me, brothers and sisters, that we may see our likeness, likenesses, not only our differences. Who is with me? Some cheered and others crossed themselves. A few scoffed and continued on their way. Emery was intrigued. Is this a sign of a true believer? Then the young preacher reached into a box and picked up a serpent with his hands and said, Who will dare to drink the venom from this snake? If you believe, it will not harm you. Come forward if you are sick, and I will lay my hands on you, and you will recover. Well, that was enough for everyone. They quickly cleared out of the area, including Emery. She exited the park and crossed the street, passing a local grocery store. She spotted a young mother of three struggling to unload her shopping cart while juggling a baby in her arms and a screaming toddler in the cart. Her oldest son, who looked to be only five or six, was trying to help, but he couldn't quite reach into the cart and he couldn't console his crying sister. Bethany had no choice but to bring them all when she went shopping. They were out of milk and bread and most of the staples. The two little ones had been sick all week and today was her first opportunity to replenish. Her husband abandoned them right after the baby was born, and she had no family in the area to help. People from her church had promised to pray for them. Bethy, Bethany believed their intentions were good, but no one actually made any tangible offers to help. Before leaving the house that morning, she asked the Lord to bless her and her family and all who were praying for them. She prayed for strength to get through this day. At this moment, an impatient shopper blew his horn and yelled out his window for her to hurry up. He wanted her parking space and he needed to get inside. He was in an awful hurry and became enraged at Bethany. Emery was getting closer to the action when she saw an extraordinary thing. An older woman approached and gently put her hand on Bethany's shoulder. 
She spoke softly to the young, frazzled mother, who was in tears by this time. Bethany listened, and you could see the tension leaving. She even managed a little smile. The woman told her, I've raised three myself. Days like this are very, very hard, but you will remember more good than bad. People like that? She smiled and waved at the irate gentleman who honked again and shook his fist in reply. They sometimes can't see anything but themselves. Don't let them worry you, honey. Then she helped her finish unloading the bags and the babies. Bethany thanked her for her kindness and help. The woman walked over to the gentleman's car and said, She just needed a little help, that's all. Go get your parking spot shortly. Have a good day. And she left. This brought Bethany a little more time to buckle everyone in, start the car, and close her eyes for a moment. Thank you, Lord Jesus, she whispered. Thank you for being here with us. Her mind's eye could see him being taken from the parking lot into heaven, where he took his seat at the right hand of God. Bethany went forth and showered her children with love, joy, and gratitude, not hurt, anger, and bitterness. Emory presented her report to the, to the teacher on the Lord working in that encounter in that very ordinary place. She knew this confirmed the word through the simplest, quite unexpected accompanying signs. And Emory was awarded an A+. Plus. Aww. The end. That's good. I've had days like that. How about you, ladies? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Well, just like, and, and Linda had not read my story, and she's talking about us being kind, and I was just like, okay. Yeah. It's in the spirit. The spirit's here. This is our message today. So now we're going to dig into our four-step process of Letzio Divina with one passage from the gospel. So hopefully you're, you've got your phones off and you're free of distractions and you're ready to pray. Oh, let me close that. All right. Letzio Divina is divine reading, an encounter with God. The key elements are to allow the Lord to lead this prayer time. Be open to hearing God speak through his living word and surrender to his message for you at this moment. Accept the challenge to wrestle with and grow into the word that God gives you and allow his word to nourish and transform you. Reading the sacred word is listening to the voice of God. Listen deeply with your heart. Be present in each moment, in each movement and take time to savor the process. Be attentive to your breathing, let go of distractions and open yourself to this encounter with God. Our first movement is Letzio, which means reading. We will read the scripture passage slowly. Listen for a word or a small phrase that beckons, unnerves, disturbs, and shimmers. And gently focus on that word in silence. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven, took his right hand, took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs.
Our second movement is meditatio, which means reflecting. We will read the same scripture passage again. Focus on the word or phrase that shimmers and accept any images, feelings, and memories that stir in your heart. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. Our third movement is oratio, which means responding. We will read the same scripture passage again. Listen for what connects with your life and record the prayer, awareness, or call to action that arises from your reflection. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven, took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirm the word through accompanying signs. 
So at this moment, we will share the word or phrase that was given to us. Okay. Linda, what'd you get? I got, he spoke. And I think... Wait, we'll, we'll share the story of it after the fourth movement. Right now, we just share the word. Okay. Thank you. He spoke. Mm -hmm. Kate? I got, went forth. Went forth. Mm -hmm. And I got accompanying signs. So we all got something different. Yeah. So I invite everyone watching to type in the comment section your word or phrase that you got, and then we'll... Complete our fourth movement and then come back and discuss. Okay. Our fourth movement is contemplatio, which means resting. We will read the same scripture passage once more. In this movement, slow your thoughts and rest in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We offer gratitude for his presence and his time of prayer, stillness, and communion with him and with one another. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, 
was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. This concludes our prayer time, so gently connect with your breathing and become aware of your surroundings once again, and we shall gather and discuss. All right, so I think that was good. We had several people who got the word confirmed, and so I can't wait to hear. I wish y'all could all tune in and dial in and share your your inspirations with us. Yeah. None of us got that, so let's see what we got. Go ahead, Linda. I had he spoke, and I often wonder how many times he speaks to me that I am not listening or paying attention. Mm. And I know he does because things have happened to me for a reason. And I think when he, when I'm driving, that I didn't mean to turn here, but he had a thing for me to do, or maybe it was that I wouldn't be involved in an accident if Good I continued idea. on the path I was. And so I think that I'm trying to get better about listening rather than just speaking. Margaret Thatcher once said, she never learned anything from speaking. Mm. <laughs> and I find that to be true in all forms. Mm -hmm. It's so true. But That's when he speaks, yeah, we need to be paying more attention. Absolutely. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. beautiful. Okay. Um, I got went forth, and I, I kind of was contemplating on the gospel and your your writings, 
about going forth and looking for signs. But I just thought about um, each day we have the opportunity to go forth and spread God's love. And, you know, as, as your story says, you know, some people aren't quite as good as spreading God's love. And But it's up to us to kind of turn the tables and be the light to those, even those people that are angry and in a hurry and all. And sometimes we can just smile at them. A lot of times if I go up to in the grocery store and it seems like the checker might be a little harried, I'll say, well, how are you? Are you are you tired of standing? Or how is your day going? Mm-hmm. And it's like they'll open up, you know. Yeah. If you just stand there and you don't say anything kind to them, they just, you know. But yeah. Anyway. I'm sure they feel invisible a lot of times and just yeah. like a machine. And Sure. That's, um, a, that's a, a thankless job sometimes. And so, anyway. Unless you're in line. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's really that's sweet. Great. I love that. Yeah, that's true. That. That's my little way to share God's love. (laughs) That's a great way to share God's love. Well, that goes right in with what I got, a company and signs, because in it, it was from the gospel and from the story, you know, and I was thinking about it and thinking how, um, you know, you remember that phrase, preach the gospel and when necessary use words. Right. And so then I was thinking, you know, okay, these people in my story, um, their actions may not match their intentions. And I wondered how many times I'm like that. The sign I'm giving isn't about God's love. It's about stressors and me not listening, maybe to God. (laughs) And so, you know, and so then I was thinking, I have to remember that with other people too, that the sign they're giving may not match their intention. And so, so just like you, like the little checker, maybe people were ugly and short and mean and just like the guy needing the parking place he yeah. couldn't think about her and what she was going through all right. he could think about was himself yeah. um and if you asked him if he wanted to go be mean to a young mother he would probably say no right. you know because he didn't see that and yeah. so just like the checker who may be treated mistreated you know they may come across as kind of angry and uncaring about the right. people next to them because People in front of them don't pay attention to them yeah. until Kate comes. So <laughs> let's all work on that this week. Let's make it attention. But look at people and notice right. them and let our signs match our intentions. I yes. think that's that's what Very I got. So. Yes, wear Very Jesus. Good. Wear Jesus in, in your face and people will see it. Amen. And look for the face of God in every that's face right. you see. There you go. That's the right. parish prayer is perfect. Amen. Perfect. Yay, what a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for this time. I feel like it was a very inspirational time. Um, I hope Fred's watching. We love you. And AJ, take care of yourself. You too. Tomorrow's my sister Cindy's birthday. She's watching, so we can tell her happy birthday. Happy Happy birthday, birthday, Cindy. Cindy. And happy belated birthday to you, too. (laughs) All right. You got it coming, honey. (laughs) Thanks. Monica's always good about it. I'm so glad you were here with us, Linda. It's a treat to have you. Thank you. you. I've enjoyed it. Bringing that smile, how can we not be joyful, That's right? right? Okay, we, we pray everyone has a good week. Stay safe, stay well, stay wearing the cover of Jesus to everybody, and we will see you again next week. Amen. Bye. Bye. Bye.